The first thing that comes to my mind is, is it covenantal? That is so specific that I can't find in any other religion. Despite the fact that they speak of the New Testament like the New Covenant, it's not a covenant in the same way. But if you look in the way in which the Bible talks about it, you have bespoken me, I have bespoken you, uh, we have made this deal, I'll be your God, you'll be my people, this is what you do, this is what I do. And that whole notion of how we live in a covenantal relationship with God is important. If someone is going to say uh, to me, um, I want surrender and not covenant, I say, no, gesundheit, you can do that too, but the basis is still covenant. And that has to do with circumcision. It's as basic as circumcision. It's as basic as Shabbos every week. Berit olam. You know, and that word berit, I don't find in any other formulation of religion. So if someone says, I'm a conservative, a reform, a reconstructionist, and are you in a covenant with God? Uh, the people who are not, uh, who, what do they call the humanistic uh, Judaism people, they might say, I'm not in a covenant with God because I don't know about God, but I'm in a covenant with the Jewish people. And even that I would buy. You understand? But because the, the notion of covenant coming together and having a relationship that way. So marriage, covenant, all these things that are covenant. And the language of so many people is uh, the spiritual people. Ego, you got to get rid of your ego. When I hear someone say, get rid of your ego, I watch my pocketbook. My ego is a very good manager. It's a lousy boss, but it's an excellent manager. And when I say that, um, when somebody says, give up your ego, and most of the time I look at the kids who grow up today, they don't even have an ego to begin with, you know? So I think ego is a great manager, it's a great asset, that we have is not a good boss. What's the difference between being a boss and not being a boss? If the ego is transparent to the boss, to the soul, to God, yeah, then it's a wonderful job, does a wonderful job. That's why in Hasidism often says that you have to have bitul hayesh to destroy the something. And I say, no, 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 no. We don't have to destroy anything. We only have to make it transparent not to offer resistance, to let the light flow through, let the awareness flow through. But the job needs doing, you know, and it's, it's very important. When I ask somebody, how do you want to be, what kind of a Jew do you want to be, and how do you want to be a Jew, I would want to say, you have to have a Yiddish ego, you know, uh, which will get upset, for instance, if you see something is uh, not meeting uh, equity, is not meeting justice, you know. If you see uh, there is something enslaving people, you know. If you see how uh, society is, is made wrong, look at the number of Jews who have had the feeling somehow that they want to be in politics and fix the world. I'm smiling because I remember a story I want to tell. Uh, in Winnipeg, there was a man by the name of Reb Moshe Gray. Gurari was his name, but he advertised as Gray. He was a member of parliament, and he also had um, a travel agency. So people who wanted to send money to the Ukraine, to this and that, he handled a lot of things. And he was the representative of a district where most immigrant Jews... Ukrainians and Russians and Poles live. So they all came to Moshe Gray, who was their ombudsman, and if he needed to fix something, he fixed it. He was elected year after year after year. This constituency didn't let go of him. He was a sweetheart. Shabbos morning, he would go to the Schwitz with another buddy, a Mr. Simkin, and they would finish at the Schwitz in time when we were making Kiddush in shul, and then they would come and hang out with the buddies in shul, because uh, what was going on for them, uh, to them Shabbos was Schwitz, not davening, but Kiddush, you know, it's another story to hang out with the folks. 
So Moshe Gray calls me one day and he says, Zalman, I need a favor from you. No, who wouldn't do Moshe Gray a favor? He does favors for everybody. And he says, every year I give a speech that gets printed in the Hansard that I am a socialist, but I'm not a socialist for Marx. I'm a socialist for Isaiah. And I want to know, could I maybe be a socialist from Jeremiah? <laughs> so I had to find for him stuff from Jeremiah. And every year he graduated to Amos and to, you know, finally he was a socialist from Pirkei Avot the year he passed on. So I'm just telling you, that wonderful sense that we have about equity is, is just in that, in that way. Uh, so he doubles in the Schwitz, so what? But you know, when it comes to making sure that people should know he cares for people because of Isaiah. Yeah. So that is also part of covenant, I think.